So earlier this week, I recorded my first live video. And in that video, I basically built out a full application in AppSheet. And it took longer than I would have liked. Uh, it was about an hour long. I'm trying to work on that in the future. I also had numerous technical difficulties that I need to work through. And I, I have been working through since then. Uh, but basically, again, in that video, we did build an app. And that AppSheet app was a AI-powered trivia app that basically lets you create a button and it generates a trivia question and answers and tells you what the correct answer is. And I told the story at the beginning of the video, but basically where this came from was over this past summer, we were out camping and my son, who's really into trivia, uh, wanted me to be asking him questions. I downloaded a few apps. They weren't really giving me what I was looking for. And I was basically using ChatGPT to generate these questions. So I, I just gave me the idea that this would be something that would be good to Kind of formalize into a little app sheet app and a good example of using AI within app sheet and, and using uh, app script to call AI within app sheet. And that's basically what this app is doing. So one of the things that I didn't really get to when I was building it, mainly because of time constraints, is having a spinner that actually shows, you know, a little waiting indicator while you're waiting for the AI to generate the question. Right now, it just turns blank while you're waiting. So if you're using this for the first time, you wouldn't really know what was happening. So just to give it a little bit more polish, what we could do is add some kind of progress indicator while the AI is generating the question, actually showing you that something is happening. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video today. It's pretty straightforward to do, but we're gonna look at exactly how to do that. But before, one thing that I wanna cover really quickly is that a lot of you have been using the AppSheet Advisor AI Assistant that I created. And one of the features that a lot of you have asked for is the kind of the ability, I guess, to hide or to not have the overlay for that assistant cover the whole screen. So let me show you quickly what I'm talking about here. So there, this is basically how you access the assistant. And it used to cover up pretty much the whole screen like this. So you couldn't, it, it did cover up the whole screen. So you couldn't see the app sheet editor underneath it. You couldn't see what you were actually working on. So if you're trying to cross-reference what you're talking to the AI about with columns that are in here or you know expressions that you have or what your view actually looks like or anything like that, you couldn't see it. You had to keep closing this window and then opening it back up again to go back, back into it and, and kind of remember what you had seen in the editor before you went back and continue your conversation. So this is the new version that I'm showing right now. I just released it this past weekend. So as you see, it only covers part of the screen and you can also resize the overlay to as far as how much it's actually covering. And then beyond that, the other thing is that you can also move it. So right now I've got it pinned to the left side of the window, but if you just drag on it, I can pin it up to the top and you see it kind of turns gray up there to indicate that it's draggable up there and I can do it to the right and the, um, and the bottom as well and, and obviously resize it with each one of those locations as I move it there. And if you don't wanna drag and drop for whatever reason, there's also this little icon up here and you can click that and it'll basically just move it around the screen to the various locations clockwise and it'll remember whatever the size was within each one of those locations. So as you move it around, it'll be in your preferred location. So this works for both the uh, AI assistant, which is what we're looking at right here, and the uh, expression assistant, which is the view that comes up when you do write expression here as well. And they both use that same ability to move it around and it'll stay wherever you had put it, you know, whenever you last use it. So hopefully that, it, again, a number of people had asked for this. Hopefully that helps make it easier to work with uh, and go back and forth between contexts, I guess, as you're working with AI and actually going back to the editor and making any changes that it suggests and stuff. So that's that. On that topic, if you, one of the things that I'm looking is for now is like the next feature is to actually implement, not necessarily in the AI assistant, but the, in the extension in general. And what my goal is with that is you just kind of, um, kind of bridge the gap with features that a lot of people want, but AppSheet doesn't necessarily have yet. So the starting point was, uh, you know, these things like the AI assistant and and help like more detailed help writing expressions than was available before. But I'm really looking for other things like that, other features that you wish were in AppSheet but aren't there quite yet. So what I did was I put together this uh, little survey. And if you have time, I'd really appreciate it if you could go 
uh, actually fill this out. It's at appsheetadvisor.com slash what dash next. Uh, and I'll include the link to that uh, down in the description so you can just click it and go to it. Uh, but basically what I did with here is these are some of the ideas that I have as far as things to do next. And if you could go and complete this and, and basically just put them in the order of the things that you would think would be the most helpful to the things that you think would be the least helpful for you personally, it'll just help me understand what you all are looking for as far as features in AppSheet. And then, and, and to do that, you can basically just drag these things around. And again, if you just put them, so the most helpful things are at the top and the least helpful things at the bottom, that'll tell me kind of what your preference is for my ideas. And then beyond that, I'm also very interested in here, your ideas, things that I haven't listed up at the top there, as far as, you know, what your challenges are with AppSheet currently, what would be helpful for you in order to be able to work with it more efficiently. So you can just type that stuff in free form down there. And then the email down here is optional, but if you do provide it and you have any, you know, you add anything into the text there that I have questions about. I'll be able to follow up with you to ask, you know, questions related to those specific things. So that is that. And again, uh, I'll include the link down in the description. If you could take a minute just to complete that, it'd be super helpful for me, especially if you're currently using the, the AI assistant. Uh, on that topic, if you aren't, you can also just go to appsheetadvisor.com and there's a page here that just tells you a little bit about what it is. And there's a link down here at the bottom that you can use to sign up in it to, for an account. It'll send you an email with, within a few minutes with instructions for installing it and your access key that you can use to actually get in. All right, so that's all the announcements. Now let's take a look at what we're really here for and that's how to create a spinner or progress indicator when something's happening within your AppSheet app. So this is the app that we created in the live demo the other day, an app for uh, creating trivia questions in various categories. And basically what you do is you'll create, you'll click this little generate icon down here. It'll ask you for a category. Again, I had put pop culture here, but let's say 2000s celebrities. And then you can pick a difficulty level. So I'll say medium. I know I won't be able to get that one. So you see right now it just goes blank there when it's loading. So this is where we want to have our progress indicator, just showing that something's happening versus it being blank there. So in 2007, which celebrity shaved her head? Oh, Britney Spears. Yeah. So uh, yes, I, I wouldn't have gotten that. I, I wouldn't have, I, I don't think. But anyway, um, what this is, it creates trivia questions. And really the purpose of this is not to quiz yourself since it's giving you the answers. But if you're, you know, have a class that you're trying to entertain for 10 minutes and you want to just generate some random trivia questions that are potentially educational <laughs> or not, you can use this to generate those questions and basically ask them and have people, you know, come in and compete. Or like my example, when I was, we were having some kind of like family event just to kind of entertain people while you're sitting around killing time or whatever. So that's what it does. It doesn't really matter as far as the, this demo, but it does have that little place where we have that blank spot or that where the, where the page is blank. And that's where we want to add in our loading indicator. So there's this website, um, what's it called? Icons8, and I'll zoom in right there so you can see the URL, icons8.com. And basically it has tons of spinners and all kinds of images like this. You just, you have to give them uh, kind of attribution to just say like on your website, this is where this thing came from if you're actually using it, but they provide a, a lot of these types of things for free. Um, so I thought I found this one, it's called Rhombus Loader. I thought it was particularly appropriate for our trivia app since it looks like a little puzzle actually coming together. So what I want to do is show this thing when that pro that where I have that blank screen right now where it's actually loading. So in order to do this, what you need to do is give AppSheet a URL for this image somewhere on the internet. So if you have a website, you could go upload it to that website and then get the URL from there. But lots of people don't have a website. And so an easier way to do this is to just upload it to Google Drive, and then you can basically just link to that. You can make it public on Google Drive and then link to that image with, there's a little trick to make it actually work, which I'll show, but you, you basically just link to that image and it'll give you the URL that you can use to access it. So I've already downloaded this. Um, let me go into my Google Drive here. And what I wanna do 
I switch over to my uh, desktop on my computer where I have the image that I downloaded and I'm just gonna dra drag that onto my Google Drive. Whoops, I don't think that that worked. Put it on my drive and then if I go to, okay, so it's showing up there now. So the first thing we need to do, as I said, is make this uh, publicly accessible because by default, things that you put on your Google Drive, nobody else is gonna be able to access them. So to do that, which you might've done if you've shared Google Docs and such, is you just go right click on it and go to share and click share. And then we wanna set the uh, general access to anyone with the link. So basically that's gonna make it, if you know the link to get to it, that you're able to get to it. So I'll click save there. And then I'm gonna, I should have copied the link while I was there, but I'll copy the link here. And now if I paste this into my browser, you see that it comes up, but the problem here that isn't very obvious is that this is actually a web page that we're looking at. It's not just the raw image link, it's actually a web page. So if you give it to AppSheet or you give it to anything else that's looking for an image URL specifically, it's not gonna know what to do with this because it's a web page, not an actual image. So what we need to do is get the actual image that's shown here and get the raw link to do that. So to do that, what you want is to take the ID. So you see up here in the URL for this, and let me zoom in again. There's a full URL and it says uh, slash D slash uh, this, this uh, ID. And then it says slash view after that. So you want the part that's in the middle there. And again, you can get it by just double clicking on that part of the URL and it should grab that part of it. And I'm gonna go over and I've got the, um, the, the uh, format that you need the URL to actually get, get the image from to be in. So I'm gonna paste my ID down below and up in the URL here, and I'll, again, I'll provide this in the description. You basically just wanna take the URL, the, sorry, the ID that you uh, copied and you wanna paste it here where it says the ID. And now if I take that URL and I paste it here, you see it's giving me, uh, it looked very similar, but it doesn't have all those uh, headers up at the top that had my login info and whatever else was over here telling me about the image. It's just got the image itself. So that's the URL that we want to actually put into AppSheet when we get over here. So let's just copy that URL again. I'm gonna go back to AppSheet again. And now what I wanna do is create uh, a, a virtual column and I'm gonna call this loader. And in order to create this, I need to put something into the app formula here, but we don't actually need anything in this particular case. So you can just put double quote, double quote to get an empty string. And I wanna make the data type of this column a, a show. And I wanna make the category of this show an image. And I wanna make the content of that image be the actual URL that we just copied in double quotes. So I copied that, I'm pasting it in here, and I'm gonna click done there. So I'm gonna save, and you, but you can see it's not showing up here. And the reason for that is because I have my view limited to uh, show specific columns. So I'm gonna go in here and hit manual, and I'm gonna add in loader and select one column and you see now it appeared over here. So it's got that image showing up, not necessarily where I want it to be, but it is showing up at this point. So let me save that again. And then the next thing I wanna do, I just wanna move it up. So when that was, and I can do this again quick, quickly, when that was loading again, let's say like 1960s celebrities. When that's loading, it's, uh, it, it hides everything underneath the difficulty. So I basically want to move this up so it's showing up at that point. So I'm just going to take loader and drag it up here under difficulty. And now it is in that spot. Okay, so we now got the loader showing, but it's showing up all the time. And basically we only want it to show up when the stuff is actually loading. So I already have logic that's in this app. And if again, if you go watch the full video, you'll see where we added this, but it's, it's, it's uh, when you submit the question, it's setting the, or sorry, when you submit the category or you submit the request for a new trivia question, 
it sets the question and the answers and uh, the correct answer all to default values. So what I can do is say, when the question isn't shown is basically when I wanna show this loader. So I can go in and add that into the logic for my virtual column to say, only show this when the question is not shown and it will then hide it automatically in that particular case. And as soon as the question is, or sorry, it will show it in that case. And as soon as the question appears, it'll hide it again. So to do that, I'm gonna again, go back to my data again, and I'm gonna go to my loader. And we have the show option here when we edit that column. And what I wanna do is click the formula in order to, instead of saying yes or no all the time with the checkbox, whether I wanna show that thing, to give a formula that determines whether I wanna show that thing. So I'm going to click that formula thing and then click this. And I'm again gonna use the right expression assistant. So what we wanna say here is only show when the question is blank. And basically, again, that the, the logic that I have in my action, I'll show it here in just a second, is setting that question to blank whenever it starts the request to call AI. So I only want it, this uh, loader to show up in that case. So I'm gonna hit create expression. So fairly straightforward expression there, just using the is blank function and passing in the uh, question to it. So I'm gonna hit use this expression, replace whatever's currently there. All right, and you see that immediately went away now because my question is currently not blank, is not blank because we're actually showing something there. So before I show it actually working, just quickly um, looking at the action. So we do have this generate action and you see when I click the, um, the generate button, it sets all these things to blank and it also sets a request trigger to the current date. And that's basically in the automation, what causes the AI to actually run to get the next question. So more on that if you watch the full video, but basically that's, this is where that's happening within this action. All right, so let's test this out. We'll again click uh, this and I'm gonna say, I'll give, um, what kind of trivia do I wanna do this time? Uh, or I'll do uh, US geography. And I'll say easy. I'll submit that. You see now our progress is indicating again because question is not shown in this case. And as soon as question comes back again, it goes away. All right, I hope that was helpful. And if you're interested in seeing the next live stream, which will hopefully take less than an hour next time, I'm planning to do that on Monday, September 29th, this upcoming Monday, around noon Eastern time. I, my goal is to go live at noon, but again, I ran into a lot of technical difficulties just getting everything up and running. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens again, but that's my goal to be live around noon. So if you're, if you're free at that point and, and wanna see and watch that full uh, app build and ask questions and stuff, uh, feel free to join at that time. We'd love to have you there. All right, that's all I got for today. As usual, thanks for watching and happy building.